So we had a report about some horses in Wellingborough and the report said that the horses were living in a flooded field and um, they were not being properly looked after and there was quite a few that were in a neglect case, you know, were quite underweight and uh, there, was, there was a few with conjunctivitis, overgrown hooves and uh, they just weren't being attended to how they should have been really. The location where the horses were was quite a large uh, piece of land and it was quite uh, waterlogged. There's a big river through, through the, the, the actual land and also quite a lot of lakes and things like that. And it was just, I mean, we're talking probably a good couple of miles piece of land, so it was a vast area. So in, in able to check this, especially with the floods and things, uh, we were able to, to get a hovercraft that came and sort of took us around the land. Uh, so we could get a better access to the horses. We also used RSPCA boats to go out and check the horses and we also used a drone for the, for the, for the footage just to get a good proper view of everything on the land and to make sure there was exactly you know, how many horses we thought there were, which was 43. They were quite malnourished and they didn't have much food at the time so while we were waiting to get the horses off we organised quite a lot of hay for them which I was able to get out to the horses to feed them uh, just while, while we were waiting to, to go out and collect them really. The public around sort of Wellingborough were extremely concerned about these horses. I can understand why people were concerned, you know the horses that we saw they were, there was quite a few like say in bad condition so we needed to go and help those horses, they desperately needed our help. So these particular horses, we do know they were owned by um, a, a, a gentleman. The gentleman was contacted by ourselves and the RSPCA uh, and did not make any effort to come and collect his horses. We told him that the landowners of that particular land was going to be using the Control of Horses Act, which enables landowners to be able to remove horses that are on land that shouldn't be. So once we were able to work with the landowners and use the Control of Horses Act, uh, you know, we, we rounded all the horses up and at not one stage during the whole process did the owner come forward uh, and want any of the horses. So technically I guess you could call them abandoned. Uh, which is a real shame, you know, because, you know, I personally think every horse should be truly well looked after out there and should just, you know, have the care it deserves. So, you know, it was really sad that no one wanted to sort of come forward and look after these horses. That's where us charities then have to step in and, and basically come and, come and pick the horses up. So, you know, the legislation at the moment, you know, we have the Animal Welfare Act and things like that. Um, but it's, it's all really down to sort of responsibility and unfortunately at the moment there's a lot of horses out in this country that aren't microchipped or passport therefore when we pick them up in, in a terrible state if we aren't able to identify the owner we aren't able to prosecute which is a real shame. We were able to get all the multi-agencies together and uh, go and go and work out a plan to get those horses off, which was never going to be easy. On the day, uh, I had lots of worries about this particular job, just because of the size of the land and the the type of horses we were dealing with. Uh, you know, when, when you've got horses that are unhandled, it's not like you can just go out and put head collars on them and bring them all in. So. On the actual day, my job was to go out and just try and catch a few of the horses and the plan was to get those horses and hopefully the other horses would follow. Some of the horses did follow, the ones that we were reluctant to, we then had to go out and basically create a, a giant human chain and then just slowly walk across the land, uh, flushing the horses from the land into the area that we'd set up the corrals and the pens. Once we'd got them in the pens, um, and all the horses were, were caught. Uh, we were able to get the vets to go and process each horse, work out what each horse needed, uh, and give treatment as, a, as and when was needed on the day. And um, then we were able to load the horses and uh, safely get them on the sort of transporters to send them to a safer place and get them out of that area. So out of the 43 horses, World Horse Welfare were able to take 25 of them. So 25 of the horses that were fitter uh, of the group were then loaded onto our, our lorries to send up to Scotland. Uh, because it was quite a, a, a long way to go, that's why we, we sent the sort of healthier horses.
then there was a group of 11 horses that were sent to a holding yard for the Blue Cross and then their horses that were of poorer condition were sent to local boarding yards just because they weren't able to make the, the full journey to the destinations. They'll remain in those holding yards until they're fit and able to be moved to a, to a, a rehoming centre. Um, so hopefully, you know, once these horses all get to the rehoming centres, hopefully we're, we're really hoping that people will come forward and uh, maybe offer them a good home. As, 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 as a charity, you know, we can, if we rehome horses, we're able to take in more horses, which enables us to do uh, great work for all the horses out of there. <laughs> you sweetheart. So here we've got Mabel. Mabel was one of the mares that we were able to, to, to round up on the Wellingborough job. As you can see, she's in extremely poor condition. She's, you can feel all of her spine here and you can feel her hips and also all of her ribs, which you know she should never have been allowed to get in this state. So for me, as a welfare officer, it's extremely upsetting to see horses in this condition. And it's, it's personally fantastic though, the fact that she's now gonna be getting the right care and attention as she, as she needs. What we're guessing with her is that she's uh, extremely burdened with worms at the moment. So we don't think any of the horses have been getting wormed. And unfortunately worms will sort of cause this level of emaciation. And you know, it's, it's just extremely shocking to see. And you know, she should never have been allowed to, to get in this condition. So now the horses are with us at World Horse Welfare. We'll, we'll spend our time getting them back to full health. We'll get them used to being handled. We'll, we'll you know, work with the horses to enable them to, to be rehomed basically. Once the horses are used to being caught and put on head collars and things like that uh, and led around, that's when we can hopefully come to the public and see who is able to come and offer them homes. So you know, I've got great faith now they're with us and I just hope they all go on to have a fantastic life how they deserve really.